The program you are about to hear has been pre-recorded for airing at this time. Please hold all phone calls. Once again, this is a pre-recorded program. The views and opinions of the guests on the Wileener Show are those of the guests and are not necessarily the views and opinions of the hostess Wileener and or her co-host. About to bust the moves. <laughs> I am about to bust the move on y'all right here again today. If you don't know it, you better ask somebody. I want to welcome everybody back once again to the Wild Leader Show where the rubber meets the road. And I am Wild Leader, the Las Vegas queen of gospel. And we are here, back here at KKVV 1060 AM Radio on your Las Vegas radio dial. And we're out there watching, and I know you're out there watching on WildLeaderTVShow.com. And you're watching on KKVV.com. Hello to everybody. I want to say hello to the staff right here at KKVV 1060 AM. Hey, what's going on to the production crew and all the staff here at KKVV and my family. I love my wonderful, wonderful family, children, grandchildren, everybody, and my wonderful husband. I just want to say hello and to all of my friends, everybody that's out there tuning in. I welcome you back once again to the Wild Eater Show. We are here for part two, part two of Full Gospel Baptist and Pentecostal. Boy, I tell you, y'all ought to know it. Y'all ought to know it. You ought to know it. That is a combination that I have, and I got two wonderful, wonderful guests right here with me again today. They were so gracious as to come back and be with us again for part two, and I have with us Pastor Carol from full, uh, from Calvary Baptist Church, Pastor Samuel Carroll. How you doing, Pastor? Fine, fine. One Wonderful, wonderful, and I have with us Minister Woody McDonald. He is back to represent the belief of the Pentecostal Church. How you doing, Minister McDonald? Praise the Lord, dear Queen. All right. <laughs> oh boy, he trying to get on my good side. He trying to make sure to get on my good side. He know this is the Las Vegas Queen of Gospel sitting here next to him, so he had to bust a move and tell it like it is. I ain't mad at you. <laughs> Okay, I tell you what, everybody, this has been a wonderful week, and I'm excited to come back and, and be with you once again. And so uh, whatever is going on with you right now, you better stop it. You better put your boots on, strap them up, and get ready, because we're getting ready to cover some territory. Call us. I want you to get ready to blow up the phone lines, and we are getting ready to bust a move. We're going to take a commercial break. And that's going to be it. It's going to be no more commercials to the end of the show. And when we come back, I want you to know, guess what? The rubber is going to meet the road. We'll see you in a minute. If you're living with diabetes and have Medicare or private insurance, here are some great news. Call United States Medical Supply today, and we'll send you the smallest glucose meter in the world, absolutely free. So small. It fits right on the bottle of strips. It only takes a speck of blood, and it gives me my results in five seconds. I can even test it on my arm. And there's no coding for easier, more accurate results. And if you call now, we'll also send you this stylish, full-featured meter at no charge. That's two free meters. You can keep one in your pocket and leave the other one at home. You can even hook it up to your computer so your doctor can track your results. United States Medical Supply also delivers prescription medication. 
right to my door so I don't have to go to the drugstore anymore. Don't let diabetes get in the way of living. Give us a call today at United States Medical Supply and get the smallest meter in the world for free. Call today. Call 1-800-527-6500. That's 1-800-527-6500. The views and opinions of the guests on the Y Lee. James over there. I just have to talk about you, James. I'm going to put you on blast on the air. Okay, you're on the air, James. You're on the air. The views and opinions. <laughs> That's okay, James. That's okay. I know how it is sometimes. You know, and, and dealing with the wild in the show, you can get a little discombobulated, if I have to say so myself. Anyway, um, yeah, we, we uh, I want to give this phone number out and give a little information out to the callers. Uh, callers, I know that you're out there tuning in, watching on WileyNaTVShow.com, hello, and KKVV.com, what's going on, and also listening on KKVV 1060 AM radio on your Las Vegas radio dial. And so for those of you who are wanting to call in today, once we get this dialogue going, uh, I want you to document this number, please, 702 Local people, 702-650-5588. That's 702-650-5588 is the local number for our local callers. And for the people that are calling from other cities and other states and other countries and all around the world, you can dial 1-800-366-8883. That's 1-800-366-8883. No matter where you are, you can dial that 800 number. And remember what I always tell you, be respectful to my guests. We do have the, uh, we agree to disagree right here on the Wileena show. Okay, so if you disagree with something that they say and you feel like, no, that's not accurate, feel free to call in and ask them a question about it or, or you know, let them know what you think about that, but you just make sure you be respectable to my guests because if you don't, y'all know what we'll do. We'll introduce you to a new clique. And that's hang up the phone, okay? All right, so <laughs> it is what it is right here on the while in the show. And then, of course, I want to let you know that you can email me anytime you get ready. Please make sure you email me sometimes. Um, <clears throat> email me your questions if you like or or your whatever it is that you want to email me uh, uh, in relation to the show, you can email me at wileenatvshow at aol.com. That's Wylena, and my name is right there behind me if you're watching, but if you're listening, it's W-Y-L-E-A-N-E-R TV show at aol.com. Okay? So make sure that you uh, email me any questions that you may have or any uh, uh, uh Nice things that you want to say, because if you be mean, I'm just gonna delete it. Uh, <laughs> so I'm gonna be t I'm gonna be truthful with you now. I'm gonna delete it if you be mean. So that's how that works too. So send me something nice in the email box, and and that'll be. And I might even read it on the air. It depends on what it says, you know. And if you let me know you don't want it to be read out loud, I won't read it out loud. Okay. And make donations to my show if you would please do that. I'd appreciate it very much. Uh, you can go to my website and click the pay button at the very top of the page and you can just click pay and uh, make a donation to the Wileena show. It would be greatly appreciated. That will help me to keep the show on the air. And if you want to just send a check or money order in the mail, you can do that as well. You can mail a check or money order to Wileena and that's spelled once again W-Y-L-E-A-N-E-R and you can send that check to 420 North Nellis Boulevard, Suite A Three. That's 420 North Nellis Boulevard, Suite A3. Okay, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89110. So I'd appreciate your donations if you if you can uh, find it in your heart to give something to assist the Wiley and the show to stay on the air. That would be great. All right, so hello, guys. Hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. Y'all ready? Praise yes. God. Yes, we're ready. Yes, what you ready, ready for? For the rubber to meet the road. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, that is, that is, uh, uh, Pastor Carl, Carl you're going to have to get that right, see, because you, you got it all okay. up. Uh-uh, no, 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 you don't get no more chances on that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 
it, but I'm going to have to uh, lean over here toward Mr. Right, McDonald because right. he had it right two all weeks right. straight. You know, you should have got it right from first time around, and you didn't. You weren't yeah. listening to this brother over here last right. week. He said, he said it again for him one more time, Minister uh, McDonald. For Just, the rubber to meet the road. Hello. Now that's what I'm talking about. Now, did you get that, Pastor Carol? Well, uh, no. <laughs> I got my own way. <laughs> okay, the rubber meet the road. Okay, rubber meet the road. Right. That's it. That's what I'm talking about. That's what we're going right. to do here. Yeah. Okay. And for the rubber to meet the road, we're going to start out um, with some questions for y'all. And, and you know, I I, uh, I tell you what, I'm going I'm to do it like this. Because last week, uh, now for those of you who missed the show last week, shame on you. Uh, but... <laughs> You missed a good show, so the only thing you can do is go online to wildinatvshow.com and watch the previous shows, and then you'll see exactly what conversation was about last week. But meanwhile, as of today, I wanted to give these gentlemen the opportunity to come back because last week uh, they had said they were going to go and do some homework of some type. Uh, there was a couple questions that was asked of them last week, and, and I want to find out if they want to start out by elaborating on something from last week or shall I move forward? Uh, I'd rather elaborate a little. Okay, so Pastor Carol, you go right ahead. <clears throat> the thing I really was interested in last week I'm Pastor Carolyn. I just want to ask God's blessings upon this program. Lord, bless even now. Let the anointing of God reign upon us. Lord, let someone be, oh God, be inspired and let them be provoked, oh God, to your truths. We thank you for it, God. We bless you and praise you in Jesus' name. We pray. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be accepted in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Amen. Thank you for the prayer. Amen. 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 God told me to pray before we get going. Okay. Amen. All right. And and the main thing that concerned me, I'm going to let uh, my brother deal with the, the tongues mostly. Amen. Yes, yes. Okay, and God. I'm going to deal with the Sabbath mostly. Okay. Amen. Well, you go right ahead. Let's you, do you, that. You come back because with what you want to come back that, with. Uh, Okay. And I want to just uh, do some clarification uh, from my research, and that was that the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. And then Jesus also said he's the Lord of the Sabbath. Uh, when the disciples plucked corn coming through the field, and the, the Pharisees began to accuse them of not honoring the Sabbath. He said, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath, which saying that he is the Sabbath, he, he's the head of the Sabbath. Yes. Change it when he get ready. Amen? Amen. And so, and then someone was called in last week and appointed with some of those other questions and concerns and um, some of the uh, remarks that was made dealt with why do we worship on the first day of the week? Now, okay. the scripture says that Joshua, it says Jesus in the Bible, but it's not really Jesus, it's Joshua. And it said that, he could not give them a rest. What Joshua did is led them into a promised land. He led them into Jericho, the promised land. Now, Jesus didn't lead us into a land. He led us into a kingdom. See, we, the kingdom of God is where we get rest, not in a particular land. So I want to deal with some of the reasons why we do worship on the first day of the week. And it dealt with some and of you're these. speaking on behalf of? Full gospel Baptist. Full gospel Baptist. Okay. And All I'm right. dealing with why do they, do we worship on the first day of the week? And I want to give some references that we can check these out, write down the scriptures if you like. And you can uh, uh, read them for yourself. The first one is Jesus rose from the dead the first day of the week. That's Matthew 28, 1 through 7, Mark 16, 2, um, and Luke 24, 1. Then Jesus appeared to his disciples on the first day of the week, John 20, 19. Then Jesus appeared inside the room to the 11 disciples, eight days after the first day of the week. The Jewish way of measuring days was meant by, again, from Sunday. And also, in the Jewish calendar, you said something about it last week, they went from sundown to sundown. They never mentioned the word midnight. Midnight came from the Romans. And that's why they say Paul and Silas prayed at midnight. Amen. Amen. Because that was a Roman a numeral a time that they used as a segment of time. So we got to realize that much was being changed at this time. Okay? So the Holy Spirit also came on the first day of the week. Find that Leviticus 23, 16 and Acts 2, 1. The first sermon preached by Peter was on the first day of the week. Acts 2, 14. 3,000 converts joined the church the first day of the week. Acts 2, 41. 3,000 were baptized on the first day of the week in Acts 2, 41. 
The Christians assembled and broke bread on the first day of the week. The Christians also heard a message from Paul on the first day of the week, Acts 20 and 7. Amen. The reference unto, um, the reference unto midnight, which is not the Jewish method of measuring days, but the Roman system. Paul instructed the church to put aside contributions for the first day of the week. Jesus gave the apostles the vision of revelation on the first day of the week. Jesus rose from the dead the first day of the week. Jesus appeared to the disciples on the first day of the week, John 20 and 19. Jesus appeared inside the room to the disciples eight days after the first day of the week. So we see many times here that the first day of the week was recognized by the church. Now, this is my take on it. If you want to honor the Sabbath, honor the Sabbath. If you want to rest on the when Sabbath. Is, when is the Sabbath? The Sabbath is Friday evening, sundown, to Saturday, sundown. Or sunset to sunset. Okay. That's Sabbath. Okay. I feel this way. This is my take. If you want to honor the Sabbath, rest on the Sabbath. Honor God on the Sabbath. Amen. Uh, don't do any work on the Sabbath. A personal friend of mine. He would not even eat at a restaurant on the Sabbath because he felt that he'd make somebody work on the Sabbath. Okay. He'd go get cold cuts and make sandwiches all day mm -hmm. because he didn't want to, not even he work, but cause anyone else to work. Okay. So he made a, it was a very strict law to him. And that was in the law. That was in the law. It's really not under the grace of the covenant we're under now. So what I'm saying, if you do want to honor him on the Seventh day, Adventists is very strong on it, and that's a blessing to them. I'll worship with them. I have no, no qualm with it. But. I don't think you have to set your day of worship on the Sabbath. Honor the Sabbath. Uh, rest on the Sabbath. Don't work on the Sabbath. Don't call this work. But that don't necessarily mean you can honor it without worshiping on it. If you want to worship the first day of the week, I think that's the day we should worship. Okay. Amen. Okay. So, so and there's no scripture to personally just definitely make it a law that we have to worship on the Sabbath. There's no, no scripture, no law that we have to worship the first day of the week. Okay. All right. So that is your uh, point of view in relation to the Sabbath under the full gospel uh, Baptist belief, yes, right? Yes, the scripture. Okay. Okay. Uh, we gonna, I'm, I'm going to come back to you in just a moment. Okay. So I want to go ahead. What, what I'm doing right now, ladies and gentlemen, is allowing these two elders and ministers to, to – uh, reiterate what they wanted to go back and check on from last week. Then I'm gonna uh, get in here in this in this mix here in just a minute. <laughs> but anyway, I want to go ahead and let uh, go ahead, uh, um, uh, Minister McDonald, and elaborate on what uh, you wanted to go home and uh, bring back today. Yes, I studied tongues, Isaiah 28 and 11. You studied glossolalia. Glossolalia. <laughs> <laughs> All right then. <laughs> for, for Isaiah twenty eight eleven, for for with snapping lips and other tongues will he speak to his people. Mark sixteen and seventeen, they speak with new tongues, as well as Acts two and four. I begin to speak with other tongues, and the nine gifts of t the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit is wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miracles, prophecy. This discern, discerning of spirits, tongues, and interpretations. Okay. Uh, but back here I have, I have in Genesis 11, and through, 1 through 7, language versus the prince Nimrod. And in his city, Babylon, the plains of which erected Sinar, all claim attention. They represent Satan's effort using man as his agent to oppose to destroy God's plans. God has his prince and his city, and so has Satan. And these opposing prints with their cities occupy most of the pages of the Bible. The closing pages of the book reveal the triumph of Emmanuel and Jerusalem over the Antichrist in Babylon. So with the tongues, as well as Nimrod was the first Babylonian to try to oppose God by people getting together on one accord to show him what they can do to build a temple to heaven. But God brought down upon them he brought down upon them the the inter, in, uh, different tongues not not the tongues of, of 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 the holy ghost not the heavenly tongue but the tongues that we speak today in different countries and different places that we speak today okay. so i elaborate on on my tongues and stuff like that okay Thank you. so you so so when you say tongues uh it sounds to me as though tongues means a language. Is that correct? Yes. 
Okay, so it's not uh, tongues is a language. It's a language. It, it's a it's like English language, Spanish language, German, French. But, those okay. are languages. Those are languages. But if okay. you speak, so is that what tongues is? No. Or, or what tongues well, tongue, is something different? Tongues is something different. Glossolalia. Is Glossolalia something. is tongue. <laughs> okay. Yes. And that's the that's the um, heavenly language. Okay, so yeah. we're talking a whole nother language that most people don't know. Is that, that correct? That most people don't know. Okay, all right. Okay, and that is under the Pentecostal teaching. That's right. Okay, all right. So listen, gentlemen, uh, I, I want to ask both of you, uh, thank you for sharing that information. Okay, mm -hmm. now I want to ask both of you, uh, and I think I'm going to start with uh, with Pastor Carol. And I think one of the reasons why I'm starting with Pastor Carroll is because of his uh, elaboration on the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I, I had these questions already lined up for you anyway. And so one of the questions that I had was, do you honor the Ten Commandments? Or do you teach that we are not to obey the Old Testament? And if so, why? In other words, what I'm saying is some denominations teach that the Old Testament is the Old Testament, the New Testament is the New Testament. So whatever's in the Old Testament is is gone, and, and you don't have to, you know, honor any of that. Uh, but the New Testament is what you, what you do need to pay attention to. So with that being said, now the Ten Commandments is a part of the Old Testament. And uh, I noticed that that you said something, uh, Pastor Carol, in relation to the Sabbath you started out, because I didn't know which one of y'all were going to talk about what, you know, so, but uh, I'm talking to you right now. You started out with talking about the Sabbath. Now, there's a, if if you don't honor the Ten Commandments, then I can understand, but if you do honor the Ten Commandments, then I'd like to know what do you have to say about, I was trying to find it, the, the Fourth Commandment. It's Exodus 20 and 8. I'll take exactly Exodus 20 and 8. I'll take exactly okay. what and that, that commandment says, uh, uh, I'm going to read it for mm -hmm. everybody mm -hmm. that maybe that have down. never heard it. Mm -hmm. uh, you said Exodus what? 20 and 8. So you know where I'm going. Yeah, exactly. Okay, Exodus. And we're going to go there, ladies and gentlemen, just for a minute here. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't usually do Bible study here, but what I'd like yeah. to do is just kind of get, get everybody uh, on point with me. Mm -hmm. Now, Exodus 20 and the verse 8, and I had seen this before, and so I kind of would like to just read this scripture, uh, uh, this, 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 this part of this uh, commandment here, and then I would like for you to uh, talk to me, Pastor Carol, and also uh, uh, Minister mm -hmm. McDonald. Uh, but, Pastor Carol, you had stated a minute ago about the Sabbath, and you don't uh, uh, have to, you said something about the Old Covenant or something, mm -hmm. right? It is. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, I want to read this this, this uh, scripture here. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Mm -hmm. Six days shall, six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your male servant or your female servant or your livestock or the sojourner who, who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. And I think that's the end of that because the next one talks about honoring your father and mother. Okay, so with that being said, my question was, do you honor the Ten Commandments? And this scripture here that we just read, together uh, says the seventh day and the Sabbath and blah, blah, blah. Okay, so can you help me out with that? Yes, I can. Am I making myself clear? Yes, oh, yeah, yes. Okay, all right, go I right ahead. I'm going to try to do my best to okay. uh, 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 help you with that. There he is dealing with the Ten Commandments. We know that any law, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not murder, those still stand. They has to stand because Jesus come to fulfill the law. Now, as far as the Sabbath, as far as it goes, Jesus said, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. Now, what he did, what they did in the Sabbath was this. They stopped, they honored God. It was like a legalistic thing. 
we, we, we're trying to please God. We're trying to make God satisfied. So we'll rest. We'll do this. And it was like part of the law. Jesus came and fulfilled all that. Jesus fulfilled the law. He, he, it, we satisfied God now in Jesus. We don't have to do these legalistic things to do them. We do the things that we, that we do because of the Lord. Now. Okay, so are you saying, when you, when you say we don't, don't lose your thought no, now. When you say that we don't have to do these things, no, uh, no, that's no, the I part. Didn't say that. Okay, well, I didn't say me. that. Go ahead and Okay, I said that. I say we've entered to a Sabbath day rest. Okay. Joshua, I said it in my opening statement. Right. Led them into the promised land. Okay. There was no rest there okay. in the Old Testament. Okay. So they had to have Sabbath. Jesus led into the kingdom of God. Okay. Now, we should rest on my labor. The Bible says, come unto me, all ye that are labored and heavy laden, uh -huh. and I'll give you what? Rest. Rest. Rest from your labors. Rest from your soul. So we rest in Jesus. There's no certain day that we rest in the Lord. We rest every day in the Lord. We, every day is rest, a rest day in Jesus. So as far as the Sabbath, is, it's been fulfilled. It's been fulfilled. We rest in the Lord. We don't have to take one day and say, oh, Friday evening, let's don't work. Let's don't do anything. That's law. And they did that. Like they, they had animals. They did sacrifices. We don't do that anymore. Jesus was the final sacrifice. So if you go in the Old Testament and begin to draw things out of it, then you better get it all. Okay. We better get us some cows, get us some lambs, and get us some bulls, and, and, and do all that too. Because Jesus is the final sacrifice. So we don't. Okay, so basically what you're saying, under the, and we're keeping this where it's supposed yeah. to be now, under yeah. the full gospel. Baptist teaching. Make mm -hmm. sure everybody understands oh, yeah. that we're talking about the full gospel Baptist teaching, okay? Uh, under the full gospel Baptist teaching, what you're saying is that we don't have to do this particular commandment, but we do We do not steal. We no. do not kill. No. no, you don't. We do not commit adultery. That's all. That's part of those commandments, right? Mm -hmm. But this particular commandment this one is, is different? It's, it's being apart? fulfilled in Jesus. Okay. It's being fulfilled in Jesus. It's not our flesh and our carnality that we can offer God anything. Okay. Everything we offer the Lord has to come through Jesus. Okay. It's through the Spirit. We don't worship the Lord. We don't worship him by our uh, 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 manual uh, conduct and character. We okay. worship through Jesus. Okay. Now watch this. In Romans, let me read this for you. Romans 14, 5 and 6. In the same way some think one day is more holier than another, while others think every day is alike. You should each be fully convinced whichever day you choose is acceptable. Watch this. Those who wish the Lord on a special day, do it to honor him. Those who eat any kind of food, do so to honor him. The Lord, since you give thanks to God before eating, and those who refuse to eat certain foods always want to please the Lord. Now, those that want to worship on Sabbath, do it. Those who want to honor the Sabbath, do it. If they think that's God requires of them, they should do that. Okay. You know, I feel like the, the Lord has paid the price for everything we go. We got to go to Jesus. I am the what? Way, the truth, and the life. life. No man can what? Go Come to the Father but by me. Okay. Is that right? Okay. So, uh, I guess my, my original question was, do you honor the Old Testament? Yes, I do. Do you obey the Old Testament? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, well, and, I wrote it down. I said, do you this. honor the Ten Commandments? Let me read this question again. Do you honor the Ten Commandments, or do you teach that we are not to obey the Old Testament? Mm -hmm. no, no, let me answer. If so, okay. why? Now, I rest every day, including the Sabbath. I honor every day as the Sabbath. Every work? day to me is the Sabbath. You don't work? Yeah, I work spiritually. Yeah, I, I don't work in the flesh. <laughs> I, I, look, I don't work for my salvation. Okay. It's okay. not a worse as any man should but do, but do you? So go, I don't work for my salvation. But do you go to a nine? Yes, I do. Yes, I have to work. I have to make you a have living. To work to do put that. Bread on the table. But, but I honor the Sabbath in my spirit. Okay. I'm resting every day, okay. and that's what God said. Man looks on our appearance. God looks on the what? The heart. The heart. That's right. Okay. We're a spiritual man now. Okay. All My right. spiritual man is resting whatever I'm doing. Okay. All right. In I, Jesus. Okay. Okay. I'm, do, I'm done with you <laughs> now. I'm done with you now, Pastor yes. Carol. I need to go over here and talk to Minister McDonald a little bit. Okay. okay. I'm done with you now. You just... <laughs> okay. Okay. Here we go. Uh, Minister McDonald, 
I want you to please talk to me about that uh, about that question. You know, I've got several questions, so y'all just kind of try to, you know, uh, cut it short a little bit. Okay. Pastor Carol, okay. you can the whole ahead, show ahead, now, so you need, right. yeah, well, you, you need to chill. You need to chill over me. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Minister. Okay, God don't pay us no mind. Do we honor the Ten Commandments? Yes. Do you honor the Ten Commandments, or do you teach that we are not to obey the Old Testament? If so, why? So that's the question. Well, in the Pentecostal religion, we honor the Ten Commandments. But also, you can't have the New Testament without the Old Testament. The Old Testament is by law. The New Testament is by grace. Now, in the Ten Commandments, there's only one commandment that, that, that has a promise. And that commandment should be the Fifth Commandment. Honor thy mother and thy father that thy days may be longer. That's a promise that goes along with that commandment. Yes, it is. That's the only commandment with a promise. Okay. But but you got to you got to have the old in order to have the new. Okay. Well, now you say a promise. That's, now that other commandment that we just read, that I just read, it said remember. Remember. But there's no. There's, so what does that mean? Remember, there's no there's no penalty. Remember means don't forget. Don't right? forget. But there's no penalty for that. But there's a penalty for this. For fifth, honor thy mother and thy father, that thy days may be longer. Okay. If you don't honor your mother and father, just say, like like what goes on today, you're disrespectful and all that. Right. Your, your, your life will soon be cut off. Right. But this is the only commandment that goes along that has a promise. You okay. have to have the old in order to get the new. Now, what about in the New Testament? There's there's a there's a statement that says uh, all of these commandments hang on this commandment or something like that. Uh, 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 See, y'all, I'm not a Bible scripture quoter. Uh, 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 love thy neighbor as thyself or yes. something to that effect. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, is that part of the Ten Commandments? Or how does it, how do you how, how do you teach under the Pentecostal? Pastor Carol, you just chill out over there because you've been talking to okay. us. Don't be thinking you're fixing to get in on this. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, I want to ask you, Minister McDonald, uh, the Ten Commandments in the New Testament, uh, uh, there's something about uh, all, of the, all the commandments hang on this one, right? Mm -hmm. So is that saying that you don't have to honor them, or does that saying they're all included, including the, that commandment, honor the, uh, love, uh, love thy neighbor as thyself, blah, blah, blah? Okay, you take each commandment out of all ten of them, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, um, and you take the modern-day world of what we're going through today. You say, thou shalt not steal. And if you look at the laws upon the nation, upon this earth, when you steal, what happens? You go to, well, if you get caught, you go to jail. That's right. <laughs> and, if, and if you kill, what happens? If you get caught, you go to jail. That's right. <laughs> so we're not, only, we're not only honoring and obeying them from the Old Testament, but we are also honoring and obeying them from the New Testament. Out of all ten of them, all of them, all of them just as well as the old, it represents today as well as it did yesterday. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, so much for the Ten Commandments and the Commandments. Let's move on because we're running out of time. Once okay. again, we can talk about one subject for the whole show, believe it or not, <laughs> y'all. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I have, uh, let's see. If not, then I can't get that. Uh, okay. This, uh, uh, let's talk about uh, uh, heaven and hell. Does anyone go to hell, uh, Pastor Carol, does anyone go to hell under your belief, or does everyone go to heaven and sit on the right hand of the Lord? Now, let me, let me say something. Oftentimes, you know, you go to a funeral, and at the funeral, they always say, whoever's up there doing the funeral, whatever, they always say, uh, this person is sitting at the right hand of God. Uh, Sometimes, you know, they might say, uh, this person is, is up there rapping in, in rap in heaven and, you know, and, and, and things like that. You know, uh, nobody never says that anybody is going to hell. Nobody. 
<laughs> Nobody ever says in a funeral, of course, I guess that would probably make the family get up and, oh, yeah. and, and, and throw bricks at them or whatever. But no matter how bad everybody knew that that person was or whatever the case may be, nobody ever, ever says that that person is in hell. They always say at every funeral, they always say that person is either up there with God or looking down on us or sitting at the right hand of the Father and things like that. Nobody never really just, you know, you could think that person was one of the worst hoodlums on planet Earth, wreaked havoc, a menace to society, but yet the whoever's up there will say that person is going to heaven. So under the full gospel teaching and belief, I would like to know, does anyone go to hell under your belief, or does everyone go to heaven and sit with the Lord? Or what happens when you die? Well, from the biblical references, we know that people go to hell because there was a rich man, Davies, that uh, sick the dogs on Lazarus and... Uh, <laughs> He wouldn't give him anything, and he lifted up his eyes in hell. Hell is real. Uh, Jesus talked about hell more than he did heaven. And so hell is real. The Bible said the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. If we don't accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, hell will be our home. The Bible backs it up. So I know people, um, just as a courtesy and a comfort to the family, they'll say, oh, you know, well, we miss them, but we know they're in heaven. We know they're with grandmama. We know they're with Susan. Well, what all that is good to verbally to say in a church, but that has no references on uh, uh, where they really are. Okay, well, let me you say know, this. No then. On that. Let me say this then. You say uh, uh, verbally say in a church, but aren't they verbally lying in the verbally church? Verbally lying. Hello. Verbally lying. You cannot. That's the rubber meets the road moment right yeah, there. You, 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 have, you don't have that kind of authority. To decide where a person goes. Okay. Only God decides that. Okay. They can try to say it, but it's really it's just a lie. It's a false So why don't they just statement. say something like, uh, we don't know they should. where this person is. Right. We don't know where this person's right. soul went right. and all that. But we're just here to talk about what impact this right. person had on us while they were right. here. You know, right. is that what they, do they teach something like that under the full gospel of um, yeah. Baptist? Yeah, how funeral, do they teach it? Yeah. I will say if this person received Christ, okay. could have did it at the last minute, okay. could have did it in the deathbed, right. Right. could have did it slipping out of here and said, Jesus, save me. Okay. And God, just like the thief on the saved. cross, right. he'd save him. He said, this day you'll be with me in paradise. Okay. So it's never too late, but to just say that person did do it and you weren't there to really witness it, then you could be, uh, you know, uh, making a false statement about uh, where they really are. Okay. God's got the final decision. Oftentimes, you know. ministers under the full gospel Baptist do oftentimes ministers be on the side of a person that's, you know, drifting away, and you have I a prayer it. with that person. I did it. So you kind of had know. a friend of mine. Had a friend of mine. A man got shot on the corner of D and um, uh, it was D and uh, Jackson, and there was a liquor store there at that time, and this guy was was on the floor. They called the ambulance. He's bleeding and dying. And his last breath said, Lord Jesus, say this. And the man looked up at him, and he said, just repeat this with me. He said, Lord, Lord Jesus, save me. And at that minute, he said, Lord, save me. And I believe that man's soul was saved. A few minutes later, he died and went into eternity. So, and I went to the hospital where a guy was just hanging on, prayed a prayer with him, and they accepted Christ. But the key is accept Christ. Okay. You know, so it's not about... Okay, How so, good you are. Except Christ just where you are. Okay, so when you die, do you go straight to heaven? Are you sitting on the side of the uh, of the Almighty? Uh, uh, are you sitting on the side of the Lord, or where are you when you die? I believe to be absent Quickly. from the body is to be present with the Lord. So, what does that I don't mean? believe in purgatory. I don't believe in uh, what that place the Catholic call uh, purgatory. 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 I believe this is purgatory. Yeah. If you don't get prepared here, you ain't going to get prepared nowhere. You in purgatory. Ain't no going to it. And sit there and get everything right. Okay, so when you they die, go, so the go. bottom line is, the answer to the question, the bottom line is, when you die under the full gospel teaching mm -hmm. and belief, when you die, you go to heaven. Go to heaven. If you if you repent, if you ask for forgiveness or you ask to be saved, you're before, be saved. Yeah, before, before you take your last breath. Yes. Okay. Under, thank you. Under the Pentecostal faith, please elaborate. Well. Minister McDonald. I believe that, uh, I believe from my teaching. Hell is repetition. What I'm saying is, 
to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's true effect. But we 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 don't expect for a sinner man to be sitting on the right hand of God. No, no. Or sitting in his bosom, not if you're a sinner man. Because God opposes sin. I mean, don't rob the bank and get killed while you're robbing it. You know, or don't don't uh, smoke weed or smoke dope and shoot and die while you're doing it. To me, everything and every person has a signed place. If 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 a if a sinner man die right now, God don't own him. He goes to hell. And in hell, that's where he should lift up his eyes. Okay, so under the Pentecostal teaching and belief, when that person died, just say if you if they're doing the funeral, uh do what what do they say? Do they say this person is sitting on the right hand of the Lord or do they say this person is is in hell? Do they tell anybody that they going to hell or they don't they just say what like what Pastor uh Carol was saying here that they just say nice words cuz they in church. Well, that's true too. But that's true too. You don't want to get in church and say well, I knew this man on the street, and I know he going to hell. You don't want to get in the church and say that. Then also, you got to fight your, you got to fight your way out of the church. Right. You know, I believe. So basically, everybody uh, pretty much just kind of say what they think people want to hear uh, for the sake of uh, the sake of the family, and they just kind of soothe the family over, even though they might know that that person died shooting a needle in their arm. Okay. Also, also, I'd like to collaborate that. Um, most of them get up there, and they try to talk about how them and their friends was trying to talk them into heaven. Ain't nothing you can say to that man that going to get him there because that minute that he left him, whatever he did, was it right or wrong, is over. He got to be judged now because the, the Bible says you're appointed one time to die and then come to judgment. So do I believe in hell? But of course I believe in hell. I believe that hell is a preparation place. Because you're also going to go to hell, and after hell, they'll become the lake of fire. Okay. All right. Thank you, gentlemen, for the, for that information. You shared quite a bit with, with my listening audience and my viewing audience. Listen, everybody, the phone lines are still open, 702-650-5588. I know you like to just listen and see what people have to say. 702-650-5588 for the local callers and 1-800-366-8883. That's 1-800-366-8883. You can call in and ask a question or elaborate or whichever you choose to do. Okay. Uh, I want to ask you, gentlemen, does anybody under your under your denominational teaching and belief, do you have anything to say about, or does this mean anything to your denominational teaching and belief, the 144,000? Uh, Pastor, uh, no. okay, uh, 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 Minister McDonald, 144,000. Well, the 144,000 is from the 12 tribes, and uh, the Jewish tribes. In each tribe, there was 12,000. Now, if you add up 12,000 in each tribe, you will come up with the 144,000. Those are the Jews that are going to be saved. But he's, uh, he also said that there is another number that can no man answer. So the 144,000 is going to be the Jews. That's the 12 tribes. Of the Jews, each tribe has twelve thousand in there. You'll find it in the Book of Revelation, the hundred and forty-four thousand. Okay, so what does that mean? What's going to happen to the hundred and forty-four thousand? And when, or how, or what? Well, during the time of the tribulation, the um, the ruling of the Antichrist, during the time of this revelation, when it comes to pass, that on the Jews side, the ones that 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 going to accept that Christ really was the Messiah, because most of them don't believe that Christ was the Messiah until one day when they see him ascending down from heaven and he's going to open up his hands and the first thing they're going to say, oh my God, we crucified the Messiah. The 144,000 is the 12 tribes of Jerusalem. Them are the Jews that is going to be saved. But also there's another number of the Gentiles that are going to be saved. Here we go again on the Wild in the Show with the Jews and the Gentiles. Boy, I tell you, we had this conversation quite a while back on another show. We went back and forth about who was a Jew and who was a Gentile. Well, today I'm not going to get into that because that could ter- carry on. But I want to I want to have Pastor Carol to elaborate, please, on the Well, I'm totally in agreement. The, tw- the 144,000 is uh, 12,000 from each tribe that are Jews that are saved. They are the ones that could convert it. 
And the Bible says, I saw that they washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb uh, in, in Revelations. And also the 12 tribes represent, um, that's represented also of the 12 disciples, those 12 of them also. So you deal with the, both of those, those 12 and uh, show the Jews that will be saved. There's some Jews going to be saved in trip through the tribulation. They're going to come through it. They're, they're going to know that what they was taught was wrong, and they're going to accept Jesus Christ in the tribulation. And I think that's what they come out of. The 144,000 comes out of the tribulation, 12,000 from each tribe. We know there's going to be many more saved, but we know that uh, references them. Okay. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, Pastor Carroll. Uh, under the full gospel Baptist, does your denomination have Catholicism roots? No, we don't. No, we don't. Not okay, at all. Please now, explain. let me say this. Every, every denomination has Catholicism roots. Because every Catholic was universal. Watch this. We are called Protestant. We are called the Protestants. Where did they come from? Martin Luther nailed the thesis on the door. And he protested and said, the just shall live by faith. So if you're Baptist, Church of God in Christ, uh, Methodist, Lutheran, whatever it is, you're part of the Protestant uh, the Protestant movement. We all are. And it all came out of Catholicism. But we protested against it. Now you got Catholics and you got Protestants. So we all Protestants came out of the Catholic. So everybody had to come out of it. Okay. So Because Catholic means universal. You know that. Okay. So, uh, Minister McDonald, what about Pentecostal? With the Pentecostal. Do you have ca uh, Catholicism roots, or do you agree with uh, the, the terminology that was just used uh, by the full gospel Baptist minister, Pastor Carroll? I agree, I agree with him 100% a, 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 a on the Catholicism roots. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, communion. I would like to know, uh, Pastor Carroll, on the full gospel Baptist, does your denomination perform what they call communion? And uh, do you do this, and, and, and how often, and why? Yes, we have communion because uh, Jesus said that as often you do this, show forth his death and suffering till he come again. It's a representation of Jesus' body and his blood. It shows that we honor it and respect it. Now, we do it once a month. You could do it every day. There's no certain time for it. Most churches does it once a month. Most of tradition because that's the time they do it. And sometimes I instruct my church to just get them some, some wine and some crackers or grape juice, keep it in the refrigerator, and take it on a daily basis. If you're going through a trial, you're going through a test, you need to just take you some communion and offer it up to the Lord. So Lord, I'm sacrificed this to you. He says, oh, if you do this, to show forth his death and suffering till he come again. You just honor the Lord's body that was broken and shed it for us and for our sins. We honor that in his communion and taking that. Okay, so you so you say you instruct some of your um, yes uh, your 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 members to go ahead and now when you say wine are you will you you, you what 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 I'd rather they there? take grape juice. Okay. You know, wine is not, it's, 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 <laughs> wine is now. I tell you the truth now. What about we live wine? in such an age now with 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 the alcoholism problems that we really don't don't project the wine. But basically, in the scripture, First uh, Corinthians eleven says. Uh, to eat at home, he said, because we, you guys came early, and some was full, and others was drunk. So you can't get drunk off grape juice. But I would never suggest that we serve wine in the church. Oh. But so wine is permitted in communion. But I would just wouldn't um, project that we always do grape juice okay. at our church. Okay, all right. So you, uh, 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 so you believe in communion, and you believe in doing communion as often as they choose, mm -hmm. uh, even in private. Or also in the worship service, and the worship service is basically once a month mm -hmm. under the full gospel teaching. Okay, am I right? Right, right, okay. right. Okay, right. all right. Okay, uh, and and it's and it's not wine; it's grape juice grape in the juice. church. Grape juice. Uh, 
crackers and grape juice or whatever, something right. to that effect. Right. Okay. It seemed like Jesus did this as a remembrance of him. He says, after you do this, remember me. Okay. There's only two ordinances left in the church, okay. baptism okay. and the Lord's Supper. All right. Minister McDonald, please elaborate on communion for Pentecostal faith, please. Well, like, pa well, like Pastor was saying, that we you take it and do it do it in the, as often as you would remember of me. In uh, 1 Corinthians 11 and 24, it speaks of communion. But also, um, we, we, we practice communion a whole lot. We, we practice it and we do it, and we also practice the, the, the damnation of communion. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, listen, everybody. <laughs> Boy, I tell you, the Wally in the Show goes fast. Woo-wee, the time goes fast. We get ready to take a break, and we'll be right back. If you're living with diabetes and have Medicare or private insurance, here is some great news. Call United States Medical Supply today, and we'll send you the smallest glucose meter in the world, absolutely free. So small, it fits right on the bottle of strips. It only takes a speck of blood and it gives me my results in five seconds. I can even test it on my arm. And there's no coding for easier, more accurate results. And if you call now, we'll also send you this stylish full featured meter at no charge. That's two free meters. You can keep one in your pocket and leave the other one at home. You can even hook it up to your computer so your doctor can track your results. United States Medical Supply also delivers prescription medication right to my door so I don't have to go to the drugstore anymore. Don't let diabetes get in the way of living. Give us a call today at United States Medical Supply and get the smallest meter in the world for free. Call today. Call 1-800-527-527. 6500. That's 1-800-527-6500. Hi, this is Wileena, the Las Vegas Queen of Gospel. First of all, I really do appreciate your listening and viewing my show every week. I would greatly appreciate your financial assistance as well to keep my show on the air. Please just make some type of contribution, $5, $10, $20, $50, $100 or more, whatever you desire. Please log on to www.wileenertvshow.com and click the pay button. Or please send your check or money order to Wileener, that's spelled W-Y-L-E-A-N-E-R, to 420 North Nellis Boulevard, Suite A3, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89110. Also, if you would like to be a guest on the show, please call 702-242-2100 or email me at wileenertvshow at aol.com. That's all for now, and thanks again for your continued support. Blessings to you, too. And this is where the rubber meets the road. Okay, everybody, we're back. We're back. And um, listen, I appreciate you tuning in and listening today. Uh, no callers called in today, but I, I know what happens. I've had people to say that we just we get, you know, we just enjoy listening and we just really don't want to call. We just want to listen to the show. So I appreciate you tuning in and listening today. And I appreciate my two guests that I have here from Full Gospel Baptist, uh, Calvary Baptist Church, and from Minister, uh, Minister McDonald from the Pentecostal Faith. And uh, Minister McDonald, uh, uh, informed me earlier on that he uh, is no longer a part of the Pentecostal faith. I'm going to give him just a minute to elaborate on that in just a moment. But right now, uh, Pastor Carol, I would like to have your closing thought, please. Amen. God bless you, uh, Sister Wileena. We appreciate God for you and this uh, great program and the um, information and the revelations that shared among God's people. I just want to encourage every heart that don't know the Lord to get to know him in a special way. If you don't know him, you need to grasp him. Thank God for these revelations that we've shared with you today. But they're unfruitful if you don't put it in your spirit and in your heart. So we pray today in the name of Jesus. If you don't know him, repeat this with me. Uh, just repeat this. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner. Save me, deliver me, and set me free. And now you're saved. Now, if you are saved, you need to get into the word. Mark 4 says, some seed fell by the wayside. Some fell on, among the thorns, and, this, and, the, and the thorns choked it out. You need to get into good ground and let this give you a hundredfold. Even if you heard something today that inspired you and stirred you, you need to get into your word and search it for yourself. And let God begin to reveal to you what he have you to apply it to your life and make it live. God bless you. We certainly enjoyed being with you. Let me bid you Godspeed. Okay, thank you so much, Pastor Carroll. And now, Minister McDonald, please. Yes, um, I would like to thank the opportunity of me being here the last couple of weeks. 
I'm changing my religion from Pentecostal because in, in God's word, there's no such thing as a denomination. So I'm, a, I'm, re, I'm converting to non-denomination because all the denominations to me is, is have their own way to, to Christ. And by, by that way that I am going to be denomination, reason why is that I'm non-denomination because Lord knows that as long as I got a relationship with him, I don't have to claim no kind of relationship or religion of, of any sort. That's why I do what I do. I'm um, mostly like to thank you and just, just get a relationship with God. Just go out there instead of you doing something, just make sure that when you leave here, because the Bible is basic instructions before leaving earth. That's why I make sure you get your get the relationship with him so you'll be secured and you have a great foundation to stand on when you leave and go to the day of judgment. All right. Thank you very much, Minister McDonald. I just want to say thanks once again to these two wonderful, wonderful gentlemen. I've had a great time with you guys for the past two Saturdays, and I want to say I thank you so much for coming on my show and sharing your teaching and your beliefs. It's been wonderful. It's been a great show, everybody. And I want you all to know, you all know what I always tell you. There's so many different teachings and beliefs out there, so many different denominations. Everybody say they have the truth. You always to you to study for yourself. Get in the Bible, get in the books, get in the encyclopedias, do what you got to do, but study for yourself. You owe it to yourself. Don't wait for the person up front to tell you everything you need to know. Get in that book and study for yourself. Well, next week we've got two wonderful, interesting guests for you again next week, and I just want you to tune in. This is the show. Y'all know who I am. I'm Wileen of the Las Vegas Queen of Gospel, and this is the show, and this is where the Meets the road. See you next week. The program just gave you. Please take the time to contact the ministry that brought you that blessing. Be truly thankful. Bless them in return.